Well, this is uh, episode 11 of the Matrix Empire after action report. This video uh, hopefully is going to be a little bit shorter than our last um, episode 10, our two hour mega marathon session. Um, one of the things I didn't get to do at the end of that episode was to <coughs> actually post a lot of the stuff on the screen for my advisors and so that's what this episode's going to be about uh, trying to let my advisors catch up on their different respective avenues within the game uh, first thing we'll look at our characters here you see we have one ambassador still over um, in the column domain which is the green domain of the Keturovs. Um have a colony governor located on our home planet a fleet admiral uh, who's commanding first fleet we have a new fleet admiral who's taken over for our other fleet admiral that was removed from his position he's commanding second fleet Intelligence officer, which uh, Aura Shakia, who is our main saboteur. We also have a counter espionage intelligence agent. Our leader, located at our home planet. Four scientists. see where they're located. Uh, this guy here is located at the Tribu Research Station, Ugatir Research Location. Uh, here's another one at Ugatir and Mythos 10. And we have two troop generals which we don't know anything about. Um, so what we're going to actually do is uh, my military advisor has suggested that we take one of our troop generals and send him over to our fleets that we're using, that we're going to be using our uh, troops to invade that Daesh planet. Um, so I'm going to transfer him over now that I'm thinking about that. Hopefully uh, he can get over there before we start the invasion of the Diutes. So that's our characters. Uh, research. Looking at our research here. Uh, looks like we have some uh, aerial weapons that are look like they're in the queue that we're doing right now. And you notice they're at 99%. Scroll down a little bit here and see if we have anything else in weapons here. Looks like uh, looks like that's it. I know my research advisor has sent me a new list of uh, things to start uh, looking at, but since I'm going to use this video as a uh, more along the lines of letting my advisors see where everything lays. Um, I'm going to give them a couple hours to send their recommendations over and uh, any changes they want to make to what information they had broadcast to me earlier. Energy and construction. Um, you see we're actually going for pure energy discharge at this point. I think. Let me see here. Looked like it to me. General hyperdrive. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Just trying to see if there's anything else on the list that we has been queued up. Doesn't look like it. So I haven't actually put in the recommendations yet for my uh, 
research advisor so that's why he had sent me some information but I wanted to do a video on where everything was as we traded a bunch of technologies with the T um, the Tekins last episode and we also spent a little bit of time trading with the humans so as soon as this is finished saving looks like the only one uh, for energy we had was actually pure energy for high tech, where do we stand with high tech? Uh, looks like we're doing the advanced fuel storage. Um, I'm not sure if anything else is queued up. Take a look here. Doesn't look that way. But like I said, I haven't actually put in the information that my research advisor has sent me. Um, I don't want to do that until he's got a chance to update all of his lists. As far as the research stations go, we have a total of 10 of them. We are producing 556k of weapons. This is kind of interesting. We actually have 625 research capacity, but yet our output's only 556. energy capacity 775 energy is output is 660 and high tech is 625 actual output is 1032 so I think we're getting our bonus from our uh, special wonder we built for the high tech but I think we've reached our research limit um, for the other research d departments um, that aren't getting that high tech wonder bonus and that could be why we're not actually getting as much output as we should but I'm sure our research advisor will let us know uh, why that is and I'll try to explain that to you uh, what he says uh, during our next video uh, so that's our research. As far as our resources, uh, if we go into our colony, the colony planets, uh, you can see that our uh, you can see that our Caribbean spice is starting to get sent around into our different planets here. We even have it on uh, Betfuku which is our Hakonish planet which is way away from where the Caribbean spice actually is so we're getting Caribbean spice sent around pretty well throughout our galaxy um, our other special resource which was the Zabidian fluid let's see if that's coming around starting to come around our Yes, we're starting to see some of that as well, starting to flow throughout our uh, empire, so that's good. Two of those special resources. Um, yep, here we got some here in our main, um, in our home world. So, two of the special resources are starting to go. We actually have a third resource that lotus fruit. Um, and I'm actually going to be colonizing that planet here with our colony ship. Uh, if we zoom out here. So we will have another special rare resource. I believe it was this system right here. And yes, here it is. So we click on this planet. Uh, and you notice our recently um, completed colonization ship, Curious Relic, is going to colonize this planet shortly. Hopefully we can get it before the humans move down. Uh, as far as res um, resources, uh, I mean we got 
a lot of resources coming in. We have quite a bit stored up. Um, I think our resource department did a great job of securing a lot of resources. Uh, we have a maximum of 20,000 Buffarian silk, Osalia. I mean, we've got a mountain of resources. It's just getting enough stations build up so we can start using these resources uh, to build for our military which I did want to spend a few minutes going over for our military advisor here let him know where things uh, lay uh, during last episode oh, let's switch over to military ships here uh, towards the end of the last episode uh, I started building uh, some carriers. You can see that uh, we have five carriers. Four of them look like they're complete. One is still under complete. We're going to set our carriers into a new fleet, which will be 11th fleet. And I also built uh, five cruisers. One, two, oop. one, two, three, four. Five, and we're going to put these five cruisers into a new fleet. So that'll be 12th fleet. Um, as an overview, we have two capital ships, uh, these carriers, we have seven cruisers, uh, a bunch of destroyers, probably about 20 destroyers, about 20 escorts, and maybe 30 escorts, quite a few escorts and two four frigates and we have our troop transports which are uh, filled with troops so let's look at our different fleets here seventh fleet um, seventh fleet is located kind of centrally located in the middle of the galaxy uh, is a fleet of uh, five escorts see what we have next here is 8th fleet again five escorts kind of uh, around our home system the 7th and 8th fleets was originally designed to be quick strike uh, escorts to take out pirates um, but we seem to take we've seemed to have uh, rectified our pirate situation at least close to our home base uh, these other civilizations haven't done such a good job so as we expand out kind of down over in this way kind of over in the top corner of the galaxy there seems to be still a lot of pirates in fact there's still a lot of pirates over here on the other side of the galaxy where our other new diute system was just created you can actually see there's a pirate in that system um, which I'm hoping to rectify here shortly uh, going back into our fleets, Ninth Fleet uh, is refueling, should be in this system here. Where's Ninth Fleet? Here we go. They're going to be hopping aboard the shuttle bus and coming over here to take over the Diute system here. So hopefully uh, next episode we'll be colonizing uh, this system here forcibly and we'll be using our colony ship to take over this system. Uh, that's, so that's 9th Fleet. 11th Fleet is our um, carrier fleet, the one that's just being created. 12th Fleet is our new cruiser fleet. 5 ships, 710 firepower. 10th uh, Fleet was actually one of these um, capital ships that we engaged with earlier and, and um, had found in I think it was just the last episode or maybe the episode before that we had found a uh, capital ship. And so this was it. I actually added it to Fleet 1 or Fleet 2, but I've now removed it from that fleet because I'm thinking about sending uh, it over to uh, our Diute system over here and seeing if uh, it can just patrol this new planet and protect it from any ships, the pirate ships that might come in there. Um, so that is Fleet 10. Um, I haven't 
actually done it yet, but I'm had broken off the fleet and and in the process of thinking about sending it up here. And thus we have another mission that it needs to do. Uh, first fleet is our original fleet of ships that we had found back in episode two or three in the middle of the galaxy. Quite interesting that now that we see the galaxy, um, Fleet 1 and Fleet 2, if you go way back to these episodes, were actually in this uh, Thundian, or Thurdian Fog Forward Supply Zone and uh, up here in the uh, one of those other special areas that was right here right outside where the five races started the game. So I think we were really lucky to get those um, ships because we had to travel way up here. So good advice by our advisors to uh, search these areas out right off the bat um, and basically stole those ships from all of our enemies that were just around the corner from them. So first fleet um, located uh, down here in the bottom right hand corner they've been killing off a lot of the pirate bases down here um, hopefully you're gonna get this area cleared out so we don't have any issues with the pirates second fleet is located up here in the top left hand corner uh, basically just positioned up there for strike and defense and third fleet is our destroyer fleet here kind of positioned in the middle of our galaxy um, as far as our empire goes it's the middle of the galaxy and uh, in case anybody was to start any business up in this area and fourth fleet is that single escort that was created by the computer when it shouldn't have been created so we'll just disregard fourth fleet and we're back to 7th Fleet. So that's that's a rundown of our different fleets for our military advisors. Um, a couple things of note for our, because like I said, uh, when I get the game on pause, I like to analyze what everybody's doing. So I've redesigned this whole sector where everybody's going and what they're looking at and who's attacking and who's moving out, you know, of the sectors. One of the things that I don't like is, like for example, this, we have three exploration ships. Yeah, I believe they're all exploration ships. Yes, three exploration ships that are all trying to go into this one system. Then the, they find a pirate base, so they all run out of the system, and then they come back to the system, and then they run out. So I basically told these guys to stop going back in there and just start exploring other things. Move on, move on. So this guy's moving over there. Anyways, the reason um, what's so interesting about this area is that we have our World Annihilation Project that we were working on with our construction ship and all of a sudden, like, it's disappeared off the galaxy here. We have one construction ship for whatever reason. It says repairing a capital ship, but yet it's pointing way up over here, so I'm not sure what it's doing it's it, I believe it's that construction ship that we were using to start um, to start repairing so I'm gonna move this guy back into this system make sure he actually changes his order here I don't want to play any of the game here I just wanna let this do its thing Make sure it comes back over here. Move to star. Okay, yeah, so it made its change. First fleet's coming down here, attack these pirates. There were some other ships that we had found, a whole bunch of debris ships that we were repairing. That's disappeared. I don't know what the heck happened to that, and this maybe this is it up here. Let's see. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay. So I did find it. Stop. That's fine. Zoom in on that area. Okay. Yeah, so we got a whole slew of ships here that we've 
hopefully going to start repairing. And um, Blue was in here originally, so he, I think he had started repairing some of these ships. But we are in the process of uh, repairing some of these uh, disabled ships out here in the galaxy. This capital ship. So hopefully we will get that um, fleet up for our military advisor as well. Uh, so we did research, we did resources, we did characters, we did military. Who are we missing? Um, diplomats, yes, of course. Our wonderful diplomatic office. What am I thinking? Ah, uh, yes. Um, for diplomatic purposes, you see our government's now way of the ancients. We have 11 colonies now, uh, military strength of 87, 89. Uh, population is 17 billion, 700, or 879 million. So compare that, uh, you can see that we have a free trade agreement with the uh, um, Keteros. Uh, we also have here with the Kedayans and we also have one with the um, Securians. We have three races that absolutely love us, adore us, uh, very delighted. The Tekans of course are close rodent friends. Um, we have the Deleri which are the humans and we have the um, Hyconish, which are, of course, infiltrated into our empire. And now we have 680 million of their race scattered amongst our many stars throughout the galaxy. Um, so that's where we lay there with uh, well, let's take a quick look at each of these so I can give uh, my diplomatic advisor a chance to review what each uh, how each race is and how the relation is with us and how they compare to us um, Keteros five colonies uh, 2400 strength we do have our ambassador there with them uh, they're plus 29 the zebra hive which is our now number one new hated enemy um, they are insectoids, the gizzerine and they're quite annoyed with us minus 15 that's fine probably they're not very happy with us because I just can't keep sending our saboteur over into their empire and month after month sabotaging something and I will continue to do that throughout the rest of the game because these guys are high on the pie chart and we need to keep knocking these guys down however we can um, I don't want these guys overtaking us and if war need be happen we will have happen we will have a war uh, colonies, nine colonies, they're only 4,500 military strength, although they have the number one military, according to the game, um, or, I'm sorry, they don't have the number one military, they have the, they have the most military ships, according to the game, because they're still getting their hive bonus for having the most military ships, so their military strength of 4,500 is split up among, last time I checked, I think it was 79 ships. So they, they have lots of ships, probably not a lot of powerful ships. Um, we'll look at that when we get to our pie chart here at the end. The Cadeans, three colonies, uh, 2,600 military. I'm not too worried about these guys. Um, they're a pretty good friend with us right now, plus 31. Um... Our, as a side note, our resource department uh, should be looking at when I'm going through this just to see which ones I'm trading our spice and our Zabidian fluid with, uh, and then he can advise me 
So uh, it's something else. Let's start back over. The Caribbean Spice and, and Zabinian Fluid, we are not trading with them. Obviously, we're not trading it with our Zebran Hive. Uh, the Cadeans, uh, again, we are not trading with them. They are very friendly with us, plus 31. They are extremely dependable, so I think um, I think that they could be quite uh, quite helpful for us in the long run if we need them. The poor Cominos who were squashed uh, in the beginning, uh, they started to fight the uh, Cadeans and basically lost the war, um, and they have been just playing catch up ever since so I'm not too worried about these guys although they're starting to warm up to us they probably know that with our military strength we could just come in there and squash our little frog brains if we wanted to and just to let them know my military advisor has suggested we do such thing so if they get out of line they will be squashed of course, we have our free Tekins, colonies of seven. Military strength, the 3200. We are trading our Caribbean spice with them and Zabidian fluid. Um, back to our Caminos. I did mention this, but we are not with the Caminos. Um, they're plus 63. We have a mutual defense pact. We have basically every pact and thing you can get. Um, they are number one in the galaxy right now by quite a little bit of margin. So uh, the two rodent races are one and two with them being number one and we are number two. But we'll get to the pie chart here in a minute. Um, just thought I would mention that as we're looking at their, their uh, diplomatic relation to us because... Uh, come the year 2770, we're going to all of a sudden switch from, if we're still losing, we're going we're gonna to switch our thought process completely about the Tekans and find ways to knock the Tekans down. But we're not going to do that yet because we might be able to catch them on our own, which is what I'm hoping for. But if we can't catch them on our own and they keep expanding out and they keep their great economy going, then we've got to look at other ways to try to knock them down. But still stay friendly. The Delary Kingdom, the humans, uh, they're plus 31. They love us, of course. Uh, we've got a uh, mutual defense pack with them and lots of uh, lots of friendly relationships with them. We are not trading our Caribbean Spice with them either. Uh, our good Hakonish friends, um, they have 10 colonies. Pill of pitiful military. I don't think they've spent any time whatsoever in the military. Um, we are trading our Caribbean spice and Sabinian food with them. So, and we do have a mutual defense pack with them. The Utrantu sovereignty, the Wakaris, our number two hated enemy. Um, spent some time with our saboteur, blowing up all of his stuff. But um, we are not trading our Caribbean Spice or Zimbabwean food with them. I would assume just squash them like I would the bugs if need be. And we need to start getting some military conquests here towards the end of the game. Um, I have no problem with getting rid of these guys either. My military advisors and... All of my advisors actually have recommended that uh, these guys need to be removed from the galaxy and we need to supplement their position in the galaxy. But I'm not sure a war at this point is going to help us. And we'll, I'll give you my thoughts about that when we get to the pie chart. We have our good secure and friends way up in the top corner of the galaxy almost opposite from us so we don't have much relationship with them other than we do have a free trade agreement we are not trading our Caribbean spice or Zimbidian fluid with them and last but not least um, ancient guardians uh, they're mechanoids they have one colony we are 
getting up to their military strength, which is good. They're friendly, plus 28 to us. They have Lotus Fruit, which they refuse to trade with us. So at this point, we are not trading our special resources with them. Um, so we can adjust any of this as our resource uh, division suggests. Uh, but that is an overview of our diplomatic relations in depth for our diplomatic office. Last but not least, we have our pie chart here. Uh, you can see the Tikas are winning with 53%. Um, we have uh, their economy is 20 out of 25. I mean, you just, I don't know just if we can catch that because that's so huge. And they're going to be able to take over more territory and population if they get some more territory. And of course, the race conditions are very good because they've got the highest private revenue and earned the most trade. They've not just destroyed any sand slugs, so that's a good thing. And they haven't started any wars, so and they probably won't start any wars. So uh, they got really good race conditions. So our civilization uh, economy is nine. Um, I think that's come up one point. Population state eight for a while. Territory thirteen. Um, that has gone up a point. I think it'll go up a couple more points next video when we colonize those other planets. So hopefully our territory will go up a couple points. Our race conditions. Um, we need to control the most runes in the galaxy. Right now we own four of them, so it's 100%, so we're doing good there. Explore 100% of the galaxy. We've explored 433 of the 498 galaxies, or systems in the galaxy, which is 90 or 87%. Quite good. Lose the fewest troops. Uh, so this is where our whole, do we want to go to war because we're going to have to use troops. If we start using troops, then um, you know we'll obviously lose some in the war, and we might oops, we might not get that victory condition anymore. So it's only 10%, so it's not that bad. But um, you know, is it worth losing that 10%? Is that going to help us in the long run? Build the Galactic Achievement Wonder, which um, my Technology and research division has promised me we will be achieving here shortly. Lose a few ships and bases in the galaxy. Right now we're at zero. So I don't know why we have zero percent of that, but okay. Uh, just to compare those with the other races, the Zimbretta Hive, uh, those are our number one hated enemy. Number one hated enemy is because they are right behind us on the pie chart and I don't like them anyways, so um, some of the things that we can do to knock them down a couple notches would be obviously to take over some of their territory or population. They have an equal economy as us, both at eight. Uh, their vase victory conditions are to keep their queen alive. I'd really love to give an assassin because I'd like to take that queen out. I mean, that might be a pipe dream, but... Uh, build the most military ships. They are now up to, we just talked about that earlier this episode, their military strength of 47, whatever it was. They have now 128 military ships. So, um, I don't think anybody's catching them with that. I don't think we have, but maybe 60 or 70. Now we can start pumping them out pretty quick if we need to, but I'm not sure that we're going to catch them unless we go to war with them. So that's an, you know, that's another decision we need to look at. Uh, control 33% of the volcanic colonies right now. They own four, which is 80% of the total galaxy. Spend the most time at war, um, which is actually good. The only war we've had so far is the Cadean realm and the, uh, the Cominos were at war for 10.4 years. So, nobody's gone to war with the Gizarian yet, I don't believe, or maybe yes. Let me think. 
I think the I'll have to check that but I think they are actually at war now I think somebody declared war on them I believe but let me just double check uh, and build the universal hive wonder which they don't have hopefully <laughs> um, Utrantu which is our number two hated enemy um, we're going to be their economy seven, so we got a little bit better population eight. That's equal to us territory. They have a little less territory. Uh, spend the least time at war in the galaxy. Right now, they spent 0.0, .0 years at war, so actually going to war to these guys might be a good thing because they wouldn't get that bonus. Uh, they, they get another special bonus if they control their home world. Um, so if we were to take over their home world somehow. Um, that might be advantageous for us. Uh, lose the most strategic resources in the galaxy. Looks like they've um, been working on that because they got 78% of that. Uh, something about the trade income. They've only progressed 1%, so not they're not doing any trade, which is good. Oh, earn the most trade, of course. And then build the underwater palace, which they haven't done yet. But, of course, they can get some points for that. Uh, okay, our Hakonis friends here. Um, they're about fifth on the list. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on these guys because I promised I'd make this video a little shorter. The Cadeans, uh, if you want, you can put this on pause. I'll just leave them uh, each of the other galaxies on the screen for a moment or two. So if you want, you could just pause it and see uh, where, what bonuses they have, so we can come up with a better strategy. I think it's uh, right now it's the rodent races at the top, one two. Then we have the insectoid, and followed by the Utrantu. I see one of us four probably winning this game, and thus the alliance between the humanoids. Uh, takes off really quickly and they start gaining up on us um, I think we can progress along as fast as them unless they gang up together um, let's go back I wanted to see something about oh now shoot I forgot it was about uh, these guys yeah it was about the war 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 well, that's right Wanted to check to see who was at war. Was anybody at war with these guys? Um, yes, the Delari, Del the humans, I believe, are at war. Yes. This shows a red line, so I'm assuming that means war. So maybe they are at war with the humans. Um, that's fine. I think the humans might be able to beat them down a little bit, which would be good. And... But we need to end that war because one of the one of the Zelbrin Hive uh, victory conditions is to spend the most time at war. So having this war rage on is good because it might weaken them and keep them enslaved in their little area, and they won't be able to expand out and stuff like that. But it also can be bad because it can help their victory conditions at the end of the game. Alright, so that is, uh, you notice I have not spent any time actually playing the game. This is more of an overview game, so my advisors and everyone can catch up from our Mega Marathon Session 10. Um, so I'm going to bring this video to a close. Uh, uh, I think that was all I needed to discuss at this point. Uh, if there's anything else... If you or anybody else, uh, my advisors wish to comment or post messages on the forum board. Look for our after action report called AAR with advisors. This is ID Jester signing off.